Hello there, welcome to another video. This is Dragon. Today we're going to be covering the Warden support. This is a new role in the Warden class that has been introduced in 40.1 update and it's bringing a lot of more flexibility and versatility to the Warden class in a whole. Warden was supposed to be only a DPS and healer class such as other classes that only had two roles in the game unless you're Psy and Mage. But as of 40.1, the Warden now offers three roles to play and the support brings a lot of extra toolkit to the class in general so the warden really has a big benefit over other classes when we speak of utility. It makes the class somewhat also broken in some aspects, but it's not broken as in the way you think that the numbers are that big. Number wise, it's very well balanced and it's on par with the engineer and the bard supports DPS wise. But when it comes to utility, I think the warden still has a big step ahead. Today we're going to be covering everything that changed from the warden and I'll, like, I'll be explaining how to play the warden support or how I play at least the warden support and what actually changed in Warden support and the differences between the Warden support and the original Bard and Engineer support and what they are and what they entail. Starting off, we'll go very simple with saying that we're going to explain first the rotation. I won't show you the build and the rubies. I'll have a link for that in the description so you can simply have the build there. Uh, I will of course touch upon rubies and certain talent points that I speak about on screen so you'll know what I'm talking about as we explain things. But I'm not going to waste your time to go over the build and just tell you what to click and what not to click. Uh, while you can simply open that up in the description and have it that way. Experimentation is of course encouraged because this has only been live now on our server for about 4 days I believe. It was 40.1 was launched on last Wednesday. Uh, so I did play around a bit, we did some compasses, we did some raids as a warden support. So I have quite some footage now and I did, exp I did play around with the build because for people that still don't know. You still have a free reset of the warden class. Uh, on any uh, aspect that is until the 26th i believe of july so that's three more days considering today's the 23rd, 23rd. and uh, yeah that's it for now uh, the introduction is over we're gonna go straight into the rotation of the warden support gameplay for for people that have been playing warden, uh, warden dps before it's going to be a uh, relief because it's quite similar to how the dps rotation works except for when you are a dps of course you start with a uh, beast farm so you apply triple trouble and then follow up with Emerald Glow, uh, sorry, not Emerald Glow, and then you start your rotation. In the Warden Support, it's different. There's no Triple Trouble, but it does, Emerald Glow still does buff the Beast Farm. So I am, always, I am always starting with Emerald Glow, followed by Beast Farm. So the Beast Farm gets buffed thanks to the Ruby called Stinging Death. And because we apply the Beast Farm, it's counted as a Poison buff. As you can see, the element of the Beast Farm is Poison. And that is going to benefit our ruby called Forest Keeper. Forest Keeper is going to ensure that our following abilities are enhanced by 30% when Beast Swarm is active. So we start with Emerald Glow, Beast Swarm, then we go Mole and Poison Form. Mole and Poison Form are, are two highest hitting abilities, so you want to spam these off cooldown as you go. Uh, because these two are on the top of your DPS meter at the end of a 1 minute or 2 minute rotation, you'll see that there. Shall we show later as well. Now Mole has a 4 second cooldown and this is a new ability that's added to the Warden in general. We did some tests on DPS as well and it's not working out on DPS and that is because of the following ruby for support only, Primal Fury. It's increasing Mole a lot on damage and it's basically acting as a Warden DPS's Emerald Glow so it restores mana every time we do it as well. And considering it's only a 4 second cooldown with no condition whatsoever compared to the Emerald Glow uh, you must have to cast 6 for 2 abilities in order to get a buff, so to restore mana. Primal Fury is simply a press and go ability. Uh, so Mole is new ability. It's basically for people that you used to play a long time ago. Uh, you remember when you were putting wounds on the target and then you would... Uh, blah blah! Fucking blah! Pet start, kind of starts to race to the target when using Mole. And it's going to shred them with a high hitting attack. It does hit quite good and like I said it's going to be your top damage dealer if you spam it up two down. So it's a very good ability. Moving forward, so we start with Emerald Glow, Beast Form to apply the Poison Dots, Mole and Poison Thorn. And then we'll simply go into the normal rotation, except there's a small alteration. You're gonna start with Poison Vine and that's going to give us two stacks of the Wind Catch. It's the same ruby as before but they have slightly alternated it if you are on the aspect of support. It's going to apply the maximum number of wind catchers that you allow depending on your build. So if you have only ranked one wind catcher, you'll still only be getting one stack of wind catcher, which is going to 
increase the speed, the cast speed of your tor following tornado, and also the damage. And if you have two rubies, you're going to get two stacks in one, which essentially means you are saving one global cooldown because you want to get those two tornadoes in to apply the dancing flashes. That's another ruby we have here. Dancing flashes is what applies the buff, and we'll also use that for AoE rotation later on. For now, not important. But this is essentially saving us a global cooldown by putting that one ruby in there. And that's what you want to do because you're going to be short on global cooldowns since we have Mole added in our rotation. People that used to play Warren DPS, uh, it was already very tight on the rotation. And if you're going to throw Mole in there as a support, you're not going to make it. So it's a good thing they have saved as a global cooldown so we can utilize it for the Mole ability. So now going back to that, when you apply Poison Vine, you'll have two wind catchers. So it allows you to do two tornadoes in a row at maximum speed. So you don't have to go back between Vine, Tornado, Vine, Tornado. With the Dancing Flashes, you're going to be able to use Ugly Cloud to consume those stacks and have bonus damage. Now, Dancing Flashes is what's dealing a lot of damage. Uh, the Tornado, uh, the Ugly Cloud as a damage over time is not that big. You simply use the Lightning abilities to explode those things. And you have a dot over time, so it's going to help you with your determination as well. That is for the single uh, rotation, of course. And then you're back to the beginning. So when we look at it from afar, we're going to start the combat with Emerald Glow, Bee Swarm, Mole, Poison Thorn. Then we do Poison Vine, two Tornadoes, and Ugly Cloud. And then you go back to the normal rotation, which is Emerald Glow, Bee Swarm to reapply the Poison buff so that your Mole and Poison Thorn are buffed. Back to the Poison Vine, two Tornadoes, Ugly Cloud, and then back to Emerald Glow, Bee Swarm for the buff again. Small poison turn and so on and forth. So you basically rotate as you go, and that is how you can do your rotation. Now, that is the basic simple rotation. That is how you can easily keep up with your valence buff because that's the next thing we're going to talk about. That is your support abilities. Your valence is the one that increases your damage. If you come, I'll explain it as if you're completely new to support. Um, for people that play NG and Bart, you're going to have an easier time understanding this. Basically, the two abilities that refresh Valence is Mole and Poison Vine. And so, since you're starting with po Mole here, Poison Thorn, you will reapply it when you po Poison Vine here. Tornado, Lightning, Emerald Glow, Beast Swarm. As you can see, Valence is about to expire by the time we do Mole again. So this is where the next thing comes in. You want to do mole every time off cooldown. Considering it's only 4 seconds, from what I've seen, you're going to be starting doing it every after every second tornado. So poison vine, tornado. Here you see mole is ready. So you're going to want to mole, back to tornado, ugly cloud, and then back to the normal rotation. And that's how you're going to keep up your valence buff easily and also push out more damage because you're going to be spending mole more often. As you can see, my Valence is now always active. And it's never going to run out. Mold reapplies it and Poison Vine reapplies it. Of course, do not forget to reapply Valence whenever it's up. You, you can spam that just off cooldown. There's nothing wrong you can do with spamming it off cooldown. But that is the easy way to keep Valence up all the time while still optimizing your damage. Having said that, you now know how to rotate as a warden support and you now know how to keep up balance all the time so you're gonna have a happy party that is never going to complain about not keeping up your balance buff then the next thing i want to show you guys is the aoe rotation so aoe is going to be a lot easier to do let me group up some monsters here so with your UV, you just want to do Poison Vine, then two Tornadoes. Tornadoes are going to apply the Dancing Flash on every target in range thanks to the Ruby. And then when you Emerald Glow, you're going to be exploding all of those on every mob. And you simply repeat that one. So you Poison Vine, Tornado, Tornado, Emerald Glow. And you repeat that one. You don't have to do Beast Arms because like I said, there's no triple trouble here for DPS Wardens that are getting anxious about not seeing triple trouble. It doesn't work on support aspect, so we don't use that here. So you simply rotate those all the time. The Dancing Flashes applying as an AoE is a support only effect from the Ruby Dancing Flashes. So when Merciless Storm has been learned, Tornado will also apply Dancing Flashes to all monsters within 8 yards of your target. 
Emerald Glow will remove all levels of the effect from monster within 10 yards. So I'm not sure why there is a small difference on the AOE range there from Tornado and the Emerald Glow. But that is really how it works. One more thing to note here is that as you can see you're always ending with Emerald Glow to explode. The Emerald Glow will apply Stinging Death like we see as well from the single target DPS rotation where your Beast Farm would be buffed. Remember how we apply Beast Farm with our Nature's Grip, it now also works on that. So when you do have Stinging Death available from your Emerald Glow, which is increasing your Beast Farm's damage, you can throw a Nature's Grip, which is applying Beast Farm, and the buff will be consumed. So, nature, so the Beast Farm from your Nature's Grip will be buffed as well. So keep in mind when you start AoE, you want to do one rotation where you do Poison, Tornado, Tornado, Emerald Glow, you follow up with Nature's Grip, and then I go for Balance. Balance is a very good AoE ability you can do. But we're doing it after the Nature Grip so that the Beast Farm can take as you balance down. And that is basically how you AoE it. The next thing I want to talk about is your utility as a support. Now every support knows that you have to rotate defense at certain times when hard mechanics are falling. You have three abilities for that. Two of them rely on your pet, but they're not as bad as people think. First one is called Roar of As Support. Roar of Support is go as a 30 second cooldown. Just gonna go throw it out there. Every defense ability has a 30 second cooldown, so it has the same cooldowns as other support uh, other support classes, and it has the same downtime, which is 12 seconds. So you cannot rotate it non-stop. So you're gonna have to really learn when to use these and not just randomly throw them out. Roar of Support is a 40 radius from your pets. Uh, position so wherever your pet is imagine a 40 yard radius circle and that is the area where your pet will apply defense in to all your members so they have to be around your pet now considering most of your fights are always fighting something and your pet is always on that thing and your party is kind of around you also dpsing that same target the same range also 40 yards usually they're always going to be in your defense it's only in very specific situations they might not be and then again 40 yards is very big so it would be hard for them not to be in the range that's ability number one roar of support simple click and go people get defense everyone is happy second ability is animal height this is a bit more tricky uh because i don't really understand the, the logic behind this ability i see very little uh, gameplay behind this so this has one condition called animal experience this is something you're getting automatically when you take the ruby animal height so that's the ability itself plus the passive from now on when you have the ability your pets as you can see triggers an animation that throws something to the player which is you and when you have six of those stacks and they you apply one every time he attacks so only the basic attacks from the pet apply the animal experience buff although it, the word the ruby says pets attacks but when i use mole on the pet it does not apply the buff so it's only the basic attacks of the pet that give you the stacks just so you know that basically you need to have six before you can use animal height and you're always going to have those because your pet is always attacking. So I don't really understand what the difficulty is about this one. But what you want to... That's something I did notice. I was using this ability first when combat started. But I would never be able to have it ready because your pet still had to build it up, right? That's why I use Roar of Support first for defense. When you need some another defense, you can do Animal Height. The other tricky thing is that Animal Height says the radius is only 30. Compared to the previous one is 40. So that one is also smaller in rotation. And that is really it. So it covers a smaller area to apply defense to your allies. I do believe animal height is from the position where you are standing as a player. So that is one good thing that the pet is doing. But the, ra the radius is smaller though. So it's only 30. I believe other supports defenses have a bigger range. And then the last ability is your nature's grip. And this is the tricky one. A bit similar to the engineer's power field. You have to position uh, with your mouse where you want to put it. Like an idol's fire and those things in the area get defense. It's only applying defense on impact as well. You cannot run in afterwards and get the defense effect again. So it's only on people that are on the position when you drop the nature's grip. But those are your three defense abilities. It's a row of support, you simply click and go, and that's um, 40 yard radius from your pet's position. Then there is animal height, which is 30 radius one from your position. And then there's the nature's grip, which is for everything that's inside the circle. So that one might need some communication to you from you to your party on where they have to stand if they want to get defense in case your other two abilities are on cooldown. That's your utility as a support for applying defense. You also have three abilities. The thing that I find that the Warden has a benefit compared to the other two support classes 
is that this class still has three bark available for himself. As defensive engineer and bard can shake it, they have nothing left when those three defense abilities are on cooldown. And there's a few situations in Compasses where I do believe this is a big plus for the warden because you can still three bark for yourself and be safe against certain AoEs or mechanics, whereas your defenses are on. You can save your defense on cooldown for your party, so you don't have to spend the cooldown if it's something that only you need to survive. That is a big plus, um, in my opinion. You can even increase that even further. So I have one ruby left because we did Iranok, but most people I'm going to assume it has not done yet or won't do Iranok as for the casual players. You can also go with Protective Circle, which is another mitigation of 40%. So the Warren here has in, in total about five mitigations to play with for himself and the party, whereas the, only the Bard and the Engineer can only use three, and that is really it. So the Warden really has a big benefit. Other utilities that the Warden has is a lot of CC. Holy Wrath is a 5 seconds crazy CC that you can do single target of course. Jimson Meat is another one that's a racial. In my opinion this is the best racial a Warden can be using. And then of course for every class you have Eyeless Fire, Shamir, Order Vendor. These are unmistakably the best items in the game for PvE content. And those are your 3 CCs. So you have your Holy Wrath, you have your Jimson Meat and your Eyeless Fire. Of course, the Warden support also has an insta cast long CC. One thing to mention here is that this carries over on healer builds as well. So the Warden healer is the only healer class that has an insta cast long CC, which makes it again a very good uh, class to go PvP as with a healer. Like I said, the toolkits from being a support, the toolkits from being a healer, all bleed into other builds. So this is very beneficial when you are playing a Warden. And the Warden now offers three different roles that you can play. So when you play Warden, you can basically play almost anything except a tank. So you'll be able to just adjust to any situation on any content, as long as you can reset your builds or you have extra builds via Embryo. So now we know the rotation for the Warden support. We know how to do damage. We know how to keep up our values. And we now know how to apply defenses on our team while keeping ourselves still alive. What else is there? In utility wise there's quite a lot we have about three mass queries which is insane for the warden support although not as consistent as the bard and engineer i'll explain the first mass fury we have is cleansing search this is something that's also available on the healer warden um and the dps warden i believe as well but it's going to cost you lots of rubies so usually we don't take them this cleansing cleansing search is a ruby located on the healer grid far on the left so that might be troublesome to get for dps players but for the Warden support and the healer, usually this is already taken. This is a 2 minute cooldown compared to the Bards and Engineers 1 minute cooldown or even less on rank 3s. They have a 40 yard radius, we have only a 20 yard radius here. And it's going to be a mass purify plus a extra purifies after, after a bit. That is our first one though. The next one we have is Bloom. Now Bloom is a tricky one. This is a 1 minute cooldown, so that's better. In a 40 yard radius, so that is a lot bigger. And this is purifying everyone inside the circle all the time for 8 seconds every 2 every two seconds for 8 seconds. But it's also dispelling the enemies for that same duration. So this is a mass dispel and a mass fury in one. Which makes it tricky to use when you do need to dispel monsters. You won't have this available as a fury for your team. So you're gonna have to learn a bit more about what packs to what encompasses and or raids. And then play accordingly and use the right cooldowns. So you have Bloom. We now have Cleansing Search. I like Cleansing Search. The only bad thing about it is the cooldown. That's not really optimal. But considering we have Bloom, it's already a big one. I would consider Bloom still as a mass spell, as that's the only one you have available. Whereas for the mass periods, you still have Cleansing Search. And then number three, Leader's Roar. Now, Leader's Roar is a tricky one. I do believe this is more a PvP ruby because yes, this is a ruby. You can find this on the third tree, right above Roar of Support. And Leader's Roar is basically going to also act as a mass fury and act as a master plan slash victory hymn for the bards and engineers that play out there. Now the weird thing about this is that it's based on your pet as well. So this is hard to control in chaotic uh, situations. What happens? Just like your Idol's Fire that you throw on your mouse location, you can roar of support so you can lead roar your pet to a position and it's going to apply a circle it's going to stay there for 10 seconds and when you reapply the button so you press it again it's going to activate the actual ability which is now breaking cc it is purifying for those five seconds and then it applies leader's roar which is applying basically the massive plan slash victory him 
Now it is less efficient than the Victor Him and Master Plan because it's only 50 stats uh, per base stat, so it's 50 proficient information and brutality. Whereas Victory Him and Master Plan apply 70 for each. So that is a slight nerf for the warden there. It's hard to land because it's also on your pet's location and you need to tell your party to go on your pet for that buff. So it requires them to take action as well. It's not just click and go as in the other support. So this is not as optimal. The good thing about this is that it also breaks CC when you um, activate the ability for the second time. And then it simply purifies every two seconds for four seconds, which is not bad. It's also dispelling, so it's basically like a bloom. It's like a smaller radius bloom with an extra massive plan and anti-CC in one. So it's a lot in one and it's hard to play with as the is built on your pet. So it takes some time for your pet to travel to the position and then you have to reapply it. And there's a build up time of two seconds. So the first two seconds that you do the ability, you can't even activate it, which makes you want to do it ahead of time so you need to know what is coming and when it's coming you need to know where you're gonna put them and you need to tell your party to go on that path and then you need to reapply that ability and then you need to wait four seconds to apply the master plan effect you know you can see that there's a lot of going on with this one ability so i think this is not as optimal i do believe they are experimenting with this so i hope this is going to be improved but this is definitely not easy to play with leaders war i think is more pp ruby because of the breaking cc ability and uh, there's more group up group up situations in dominions and sixes that you can utilize as more than in pve where people are mostly spread for some of their supremacy and certain mechanics and circles landing so it's not really optimal but that is another mass dispel so we have the cleansing search we have spoken about bloom and we have spoken about the leader's roar the next thing i want to talk about is the single purify so we have talked spoken about the masteries now the single purify as for the bard players you know that you have overture available which is your dispel slash single fury on the global cooldown now for the warden support we have a dispel called winds this is only dispelling not purifying and it's also the same cooldown and global cooldown so there's nothing different there it's very similar to the engineer but we do have the healer's toolkit and this is where i keep saying that the warden is getting broken by having all these toolkits available to him he has purification available from his war mysteries which removes a puri which removes a debuff from an ally the benefit here compared to the bard and engineer is that this is off global cooldown and a three second cooldown only compared to the bard seven seconds cooldown on global cooldown and the engineer can totally shake it because the ng has no single purify but so that you know that the single puri is available to the water support which makes it very broken in my opinion and then the last thing i want to touch upon in the warden support is the natural poison this is a ruby you can find on the last grid on the left natural poison is very similar to the bard's nocturne and the engineer's i believe acid Knight, which is increasing your body's damage for a small duration uh with some poison damage now for the warden support this is quite easy i am usually doing them together with my king's beast king of the beast for single target damage because their cooldowns are very similar so natural poison just like the other support classes is one minute king of the beast is one minute 10 so it's very very close so whenever i start single target damage i would do both at the same time so that my pet is also buffed with that buff and it's also buffing my party at the same time of course the warrior in support still has a teleport this is another benefit i think he has over the bard and engineer you can teleport to wherever you want mouse location with secret path you do apply two nature's gr uh, grips so it's going to increase your damage on those as well you can teleport in the same position on top of mobs to apply three nature grips along with your own nature grip so that's three of them it is worth noting that the nature grips from your teleporting does not apply defense it does apply the dps thing so it applies the damage over time from the nature grip itself plus the beast swarms but it does not apply defense with nature's grip in my opinion the warden support is a big plus over the other supports as the utility is a lot higher than theirs but there are a few disadvantages as well such as like i said the mass purist is not as consistent and you require more buttons to press for the same result as you can see i'm someone that uses a lot of buttons on my mouse and my keyboard so i refrain from clicking anything but i have no buttons here because i have no place for these abilities so that's my first disadvantage on the warden support it's even more button intense, hotly intense than an engineer, and an engineer is already very intense. And I want to blame that on the uh, DPS rotation. DPS rotation here requires already 7 buttons to press just to keep up our normal DPS 
of equal numbers with the Bart and Engineer. Now Engineer it's about the same buttons maybe. I believe 5 or so with the truth coming in. With the Bart only really presses 3 buttons in total. Disharmony, Solo slash Requiem and then Flying Blade and that is it. And he's able to keep up damage with the any other support just as well. So compared to that they could improve that a lot. Um, of course that might need the revamping of the DPS class as well. DPS support of the dps role as well but um well it's very but an intense you also see something weird that i don't have on the other support builds which is barn engineer which is the temporal acceleration i thought it would be a good situation to use on uh, certain mechanics where you want to extra speed on your party so that people can move around faster you will reapply it with your poison thorn and you reapply it with mole as well so Considering that it will be easy to keep up the speed buff effect at all times. Then there are a few more notes I wanted to talk about in the build selection. So you'll see that I have Black Thorn. I'm not very convinced on this ruby. I simply took it because you could combine it with the invigorating search to increase incoming healing on your allies. And then you could apply the nature's grip on your tank so it would heal. You could also do that with Bloom because Bloom is also healing. But I really haven't been able to test yet how much that actually heals. So considering the numbers here on the nature grip and the bloom although the nature grip you want to maybe save for defense effect i'm not really sure how that synergizes but if that number seems to be really lacking you might as well remove that ruby in case you were short on rubies and use it for something else the poison talents is a passive one that i didn't touch upon this is a simple passive thing that your pet applies it's a damage over time whenever your pet does a basic attack so there's nothing really much you can worry about one thing you should know about is that when you apply beast farm that removes the effect and applies a cc instead very handy in pve it's going to apply a so be it albeit a random cc but it might help you interrupt certain casts that they do in compasses or raids we don't have it ranked 2 because it's not increasing the damage it simply increases the duration of the cc which i think is irrelevant as long as you interrupt the cast that is what counts so that's another cc you have but you have less control on this as you don't as you really use the beast farm for your DPS rotation. You might as well do it reversed and you might as well focus on when to beast farm as ACC, but your DPS might be slightly lacking on that. Then again, that might be worth the trade-off if it will make your party survive certain mechanics, of course. Accuracy Search is one that we use to apply uh, anti-CC. This is one I use specifically in um, Finia's Cloisters. Finia Cloisters, you want to use it whenever you start certain packs so you don't have an instant CC on your party. Uh, and you can also use it on the third boss that applies a knockdown on the whole party for 4 seconds when she reaches 20% so you pop this before that and no one's gonna get knocked down that is basically the only reason why I have integrating encouraging search rank 1 but that's really all I can tell you guys about the warden support I hope you guys did learn how this works now I hope I didn't miss anything else I will go over this uh, thoroughly in my edits but when I do notice something off, then of course I will delay the video and, and edit this. Uh, but I hope you guys learn now how the water support works. It hopefully gives you a better idea of how it stands compared to the bar and engineer. Uh, of course, when you're a new player, you want to get into supporting. I'm always going to recommend you the Bard because that's the easiest class you can play. and still contribute as much as you possibly can as a support. The water support, I believe, has quite some advantages over the other supports. But in difficulty playing, I think it's a lot harder because there's way more buttons to think about and to keep in mind uh, that have to pop up in your brain as soon as a certain situation arises, whereas the part has a much simpler gameplay. I hope you guys are informed with this. Hope you guys like this one. The next video will be about Irenok, how to kill it and a guide on that one. And that's going to be it for me. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye.